Hello, I'm Father Joe Roche of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. Thank you for joining us as we continue with our year-long journey reading the diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalska from beginning to end. Today we have a letter from St. Faustina to her spiritual director, Father Sopochko, from April of 1938. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, to you, most reverend Father in Jesus Christ, I wish you a happy Easter, Alleluia, and every possible divine blessing in your priestly ministry. In my daily prayers, I place you, dear Father, as well as God's entire work, in the most merciful wound of Jesus' heart, and I am totally at peace regarding everything. For I know that all darkness and storms, even though they are sometimes quite frightening, will dispel in the light which streams from the most merciful heart of Jesus. I shall write more some other time. I am interested to hear about your health, Father, and how things are with certain matters. Mother Irena has left for Rome with some other mothers for the canonization of St. Bobola, I am feeling a little better at the present moment, but the superiors have decided that I should go for treatment for some time to the same place where I was last year, that is, to Prandnik. One more word, Father. I would like to know, dear Father, that should my miserable person be of use for this work of God, I am ready to help at each moment. I understood that there exist no obstacles for me neither health nor vows. Where there is the clear will of God, there exists no obstacle. My kindest regards, I kiss your hand with the most profound reverence, dear Father, and I ask your priestly blessing and prayer. Your spiritual daughter, Sister M. Faustina, Krakow, 12th of April, 1938. Well, this is the last Easter greeting that St. Faustina will send to Father Sopochko during the last year of her life. She entrusts the work of mercy to the wound in Jesus' heart, where the blood and water gushed forth as a fountain of mercy. She asks for his health, and she gives some news about some of the sisters who were going to Rome for a canonization. Though she feels a bit better, the superiors have decided that she should go to the sanatorium in Pradnik. Uh, she expresses her willingness to continue to offer her services in spreading the message of mercy if God wants her. We see her humility. She is willing even to be freed from her vows if God wills it. We know that Faustina remained in her community until the end of her life. And so, how was the new community formed? Well, we remember that St. Faustina had told Father Sopochko to wait for a sign of God's will. She died in 1938, in October. World War II broke out in 1939 in September, so just 11 months after her death. Uh, Father Sopochko continued to spread the message of the Divine Mercy in any way that he could during the war years. The first candidate for the new community was a graduate student who had heard him talk about Divine Mercy, uh, and then four other candidates came forward from a, a prayer group that he had formed, and, and finally there was one other. So the original nucleus of the new community was six. Uh, he wrote a rule of life for them. The first meeting took place in his apartment in February of 1942. Father Sopochko had been helping Jewish people escape capture, so the Gestapo was looking for him. Uh, so he had to escape from Vilnius, and he spent about two and a half years hiding out in the countryside, working for the Ursuline sisters as a carpenter. Uh, he wrote letters to the six sisters in the new community. He finally was able to return to Vilnius in 1944, and the six sisters made their first vows in secret that year. God protected the convent during the war, uh, Father Sopochko, after the war, moved to Bialystok in 1947 at the uh, invitation of the Archbishop, uh, who he had known from um, uh, Vilnius. He stayed in touch with the sisters. Uh, he taught in the seminary. Uh, he 
ran into all kinds of oppositions, even from the authorities in spreading the message of the Divine Mercy. He patiently worked at correcting errors and inaccuracies that appeared in publications that people were publishing, trying to spread the devotion to the Divine Mercy. It was a real grassroots effort, but he wanted to make sure that people would continue to stay connected with what Jesus uh, had revealed to Faustina. And he continued to write about the Divine Mercy until the end of his life, despite his failing health. He had suffered damage uh, to a facial nerve while he was giving a talk, and he had also been in a car accident, so speaking aloud to large groups became very difficult for him at the end of his life. He finally died on February 15, 1975, at the age of 86. He was beatified on September 28, 2008, in Bialystok, Poland, the city where he was until the end. And his feast day is February 15th, the anniversary of his uh, death. So he is blessed Michael Sapochko now. He's a great apostle of the Divine Mercy alongside John Paul II and St. Faustina. And we should ask for his intercession for our needs. <laughs>